Welcome to GED Math and Dirty News. In these tutorials, I will show you how to solve many of the GED math problems using the TI-30XS scientific calculator. Welcome to GED Math and 30 Days. I'm your host. My name is Jeremy Tinsley. I'm a double educator for the last 20 years um, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I created my website, passgedmath.com. I created an ebook and created a YouTube channel for people to understand and be able to pass the GED math exam in 30 days. I know you struggle with math. That's why you're here. Guess what? I'm here to show you how easy a problem can be. I'm going to try to remove all the frustration and all the anxiety of taking your GED math exam. And today, we'll be going over inequalities. So first of all, let's get started. Um, on screen, you should see some of the properties of inequalities. So first of all, you should be familiar with greater than, greater than or equal to less than, less than or equal to. And you should be familiar with how to graph an inequality on a number line. An open circle indicates that it's not equal to. A solid circle indicates it's greater than or equal to. And the greater than is to the right, your arrow is to the right, and the less, uh, if it's less than, your arrow is to your left. Now, there's two and very important things you need to know. Very important, very, very important. And those are, when solving an inequality, if you multiply or divide each side by a negative quantity, the inequality symbol must be reversed. This is why most people get inequalities incorrect on the GT exam. Let me say that again. If you multiply or divide by a negative quantity, the inequality must be reversed. If the variable is on the right side of the inequality, again, you must reverse the values and the inequality. So let's get started with some practice problems. Okay, so here's some practice problems. Let me increase this, increase the zoom. Okay, so first we're gonna try number one. Let me get my pencil. I'm gonna use red if you don't mind, hopefully you don't mind. But this is the inequality. It says zero is greater than three X minus three minus six. So first of all, you must combine like terms. So you should have zero is greater than three X minus nine, okay? Again, to solve a, a algebraic equation, it's the same thing. We wanna do the same thing as when we solve an algebraic equation, okay? So we wanna get the variable by itself. So first we got it, we have two terms on the right side, three X and minus nine. So first we wanna remove the terms that don't involve the variable. So first we gotta remove the minus nine, the opposite of minus nine. It's plus nine. Whatever you do on one side, you do on the other. Zero plus nine is nine. We're gonna bring down a greater than sign and bring down a three x. Okay. Again, the variable is still not by itself, but it's being multiplied by three. The opposite of multiplying by three is divided by three. Okay, I'm gonna come over here. So nine divided by three. I mean nine divided by three is three. We're gonna bring down a greater than sign. The two threes cancel and we left with x. But remember that second rule I explained to you, that the variable is on the right side. You want to switch the sides and then change the inequality. So this would be the answer. X is less than three. So at three, you would have an open circle and an arrow to the left. Not hard at all. Very good. So that was the first example, okay? So now, if you want to go back over that, make sure you pause. You can rewind the video. Make sure you go through it very slowly. But now we're going to go to the second. The second example. Let's change this one. Number six. Number six. Again, we have like terms, so we have to combine like terms. Two minus four is a negative two. So we have negative two P is less than or equal to negative two. Okay, so again, if we want to get the P by itself, 
P is being multiplied by negative two. We want to divide by negative two. And whatever we do on one side, we want to do the other. So normally, let's, let's cancel our negative twos. We have P. We bring down our less than or equal to. And then minus two divided by negative two is one. But this is where people make the mistake. So remember what I told you. If you multiply or divide, by a negative number, you must change the inequality. So this inequality must be changed. So we got P greater than or equal to one. Okay. Now, because it's greater than or equal to, we would have a solid circle at one and then an arrow to the right. That is example number two. Okay. Let me clear the screen. Let's look at number eight. Let's look at number eight. Okay, it's going to be a final inequality I'm going to do. Now, sometimes they, they will have terms on both sides. Let's see if we have no. Yeah, that's fine. We'll do number eight. Okay, so again, um, please excuse my theory and Sally test. We have to do multiplication first. So we have to do this negative two, we're gonna bring the three down. Negative two times n is negative two n. Just put your number, your coefficient right in front of the variable. And then minus two times negative four. Two negatives make a positive, so this is plus four. It's greater than minus one. Again, you have to combine like terms. So we got minus two n plus seven is greater than minus one, okay? Again, we want to get the variable by itself, so we can get rid of all the terms that do not contain the variable, so we can get rid of the plus seven. The opposite of plus seven is minus seven. And whatever we do on one side, we do on the other. We have to remain, we have to keep the balance on both sides of the equation. I'm going to come up here, so we got minus two in. The sevens cancel, greater than two negatives. We add the numbers and keep the signs. So minus two in is greater than minus eight, okay? So therefore, again, n, n, we want to solve for m. So since n is being multiplied by negative 2, we divide by negative 2. Whatever we do on one side, we do on the other. The negative 2s cancel. You bring your n down. Because we multiply, because we divide it by a negative number, remember, our inequality must be switched. So we change it to less than. And then minus 8 divided by minus 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Two negatives make a positive. So n is less than four. So we take our, our open circle here, that four, our open circle, and then an arrow to the left. So let me let me erase that. Let me use the red because you can't really see that well. Okay, we're gonna open circle at plus four. And an arrow to the left. That is inequalities. Okay, you have three examples. Go back and practice. Now I'm about to show you the type of inequality that you might see on the GED exam. Again, these examples are from either the study guide or from the GED.com website. Okay, make this a little bigger. It says Annie is planning a business meeting for her company. She has a budget of $1,325 for renting a meeting room at a local hotel and providing lunch. She expects 26 people to attend the meeting. The cost of renting the meeting room is $207, which inequality shows how to find the amount X Annie can spend on lunch for each person. So again, you must identify, first of all, what do you know? She has a budget of thirteen twenty-five, so we know she can't spend more than thirteen twenty-five. So we know it's less than or equal to thirteen twenty-five. Whatever it costs has to be less than or equal to thirteen twenty-five, because you don't, you can't spend more than that. So right away, we know it's not A. Right away, we know it's not C. So just that simple fact you eliminated two of the answers, okay? The next thing we know, given 26 people to attend the meeting and the room is $270.
X. So I say you can spend on lunch. Well, how many people should you expect? 26 people. Each person has lunch, so we're multiplying. So that's 26X. That's a cost. And now the additional cost is $270. So the inequality, we don't even have to solve the inequality. We just have to set it up. And for many questions like that on the GED, you just have to set it up. Usually have one uh, problem where you have to solve the inequality. And then I have two or three questions, sometimes four questions on inequality. So it's very important that you understand this topic. So if you have to play this video a couple times, do the examples a couple times, Download some work, worksheets to practice. This is a topic where you can expect to see at least three problems on inequalities. Thank you for joining me today. Make sure you visit my website, pashgdmath.com. Make sure if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. If this video has helped you, make sure you comment and leave me a like. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the, uh, the comments. So I can make my videos better and I can have more people. Uh, I can help more people pass the GT math exam. Thank you. Have a great day.